What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I just got over here to the trailer going to work on a race car for a few minutes. We had an awesome race at Rockingham Dragway 252 No Prep front of the track. It came around and got really fast. And so I don't know if we had a car that we could have won at all. But David Brinkley, we we're going to have a heck of a drag race. I can promise you that. If my stuff went down. He was going down pretty clean. He's got a good, very, very, very clean, fast, hot rod. And so we were going to turn mine up. Try to get a personal best uh, for the day. And it would either went or spun. So we don't know. You never can tell when you're out there, right? So, uh, of course, we had the fuel pump break. If you didn't see that, that was a, a kind of a, a blessing in disguise, I guess, the way it broke. Uh, it just broke. And, you know, I guess it was either, I don't know if it broke on the return road when I was pushing it back or if it broke at the end of the pass. The fuel pressure transducer locked up on the second pass. It was reading 149 PSI. So I don't know when the fuel pressure actually went away. Air fuel ratio on the pass uh, never got crazy, never got out of control. Uh, generally what would happen if it throw the belt off, you would have probably a half a second, maybe a quarter of a second of run time where the pressure was dropping and the duty cycle would of the injectors would just go through the roof is generally what happens when you, when you throw a belt off uh, at wide open throttle. Now I did shut the car off uh, after the run and it was still running when I shut it off. So it uh, makes me kind of think it probably, maybe it broke, you know, somewhere when I shut it off or, you know, clearly it had been cracked for a while, you know, looking at it. Uh, I mean, that, there's no way it snapped like that. <clears throat> I mean, you know, somebody mentioned that I could have run over something on a return road because I was filming uh, myself, but I was paying attention as I was driving when I was coming back. But I mean, there was a couple, uh, you know, spots I hit, which the, I mean, I don't think I run over anything on the return road. Uh, I didn't hear anything in the car uh, other than normal. I mean, it sounds like it was really rough in there, but everything in the car, is, there's nothing in the car. So when you hit the bumps and stuff, of course, it sounds like a race car. It sounds like a tin can in there because it is. So uh, I don't know, uh, but luckily didn't tear nothing up other than the fuel pump. Fuel pump's not locked up. That was a question I had too. Maybe the fuel pump locked up. Uh, it seems to be fine. Uh, now that fuel pump was used. I bought it from Jason Tyson last year. Uh, I did just get another fuel pump uh, in. It's a 10 gallon per minute. That's going to be on another project I'm going to be doing. I'm going to reveal to you guys pretty soon. So hopefully that's going to be pretty cool. So that one's going into trailer for the time being as a spare. But uh, let me let me show you what we got going on. Uh, what was very, very interesting is we didn't see that thing was broke till literally as we were about to push to the staging lanes. Uh, Brandon luckily caught it when he was taking the hoses off. He looked down there and saw it and the fuel pump was hanging. Had we saw that was broken as soon as we got back, or if the car would have cut off, or if I would have tried to crank it up, you know, of course it wouldn't have started, then we'd have started investigating. My buddy Carl from Rockingham, he had three lollipops. His house is like eight miles away. And so we could have probably got that thing back together, but you know, it is what it is. It just, uh, you know, it just happens like that sometimes. It, so there it is. So let me show you what we got going on. Comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com, grab yourself some merchandise. Thanks guys. All right, guys, well, movie magic. We got this thing off real fast. This is just a, you know, I don't remember when I actually made this. This is a, a bracket that I used that was off of the Aeromotive system and, you know, cut it all down. And of course that just goes to the mid plate and you see where this thing snapped and broke. It's just cast aluminum. Now, of course I had that cinched down pretty tight. It looks like it is kind of ironic where it broke right there. But then looking up here as well, you can see it was just, a pretty clean break. Uh, it was ground on a little bit right there to make it a little thinner for some, at some point, you know. Like I said, I can't be mad at this lolly. It has been in existence uh, for a very, very long time. So uh, not unhappy with it all. So it just is what it is. We'll, we'll probably actually throw this up in the, in the cabinet up here or in the toolbox and um, keep this bottom piece because it's got a good bearing and shaft in it. So just in case we ever need that for spare, throw this part away. This is the one that Carl had. So he actually, since he was close to the track, he went and got it for me. Uh, and of course it's the exact same as this one. And of course he had to, something he had to do when he was for mounting at some point, he had to make that a little bit thin up there on that side, but probably not hurt anything since I have two bolts down here. Now, um, I think what I'm gonna do though, so Carl gave me this one, but then Mike had mentioned he had a billet one and so i think i'm gonna take this one carl gave me and i'm gonna keep that in the top of the toolbox as a spare so i've already got I've still got my other enderly pump up here so i need to get that thing refreshing too so i got a nice spare there that's like a 10 gallon per minute pump 
But um, we're gonna take that lollipop, put it as a spare. This is the billet one that Mike got. I don't know where he said he got this one from, but you can see it's the exact same with the exception that it's, uh, you know, solid billet aluminum instead of the the cast. So all I'm gonna do is uh, we gotta take our pulley off here um, and then basically just bolt this. This is the uh, adapter for the fuel pump. Remember, we'll swap this onto this, put this pulley on here and then we'll mount the, the lollipop bracket back to here, and then we'll stick this thing on real fast. Okay guys, overall, pretty easy. Those bolts actually did work. I did have to take the, the Allens off. I put a dab of Loctite on it, and they went right together. So this is the part off my old one, of course. We got the new billet lollipop. The pulley is very easy to change, if you remember to loosen all the set screws. Uh, this one has two, it's got one that is right there on the cutter key and then you see the other one is right there and that one just goes against the flat part of the pulley over here see how it's got a flat on that side and then if the pulley you can reverse this pulley to whatever spacing you want you can reverse it to where that's on the inside here uh, but the way mine is set up to get the spacing correct the way i have it spaced uh, this is the way i had to do it so something you do have to be careful of is the snout right here if you slide it too far back, uh, the pulley will rub on it. So you have to bring it out just a tad. And it's probably, I didn't measure it. I mean, I just moved it off probably 40, 50 thousandths. It was scrubbing when this was almost flush. It wasn't quite flush. So that is the part that goes onto the fuel pump. So the fuel pump is down there and you can see it's got that nice little round collar. Basically this collar just slides on. It is hex head down there, the fuel pump sticking out is also x and this is an older pump so the the newer pumps this older pump right here basically this was it had this mounted to it so the lollipop would bolt straight to to this like so and you know that's all fine and dandy but it's it's more difficult to to get your clocking correct it works but that's the old style the new style basically this little flange is machined down and then this is so that slides right on so it makes it super easy uh this was not bad but i mean it's just not you know it's a little bit older so it is what it is okay let's stick this thing on real fast and then we will uh i don't know if we're gonna try to start it or not it's like 42 degrees so that's a little on the chilly side okay guys so the fuel pump bracket is now on and you know i could probably do this a little different uh, instead of using the intermediate bracket, I could probably just use uh, two really long bolts and then just uh, feed them all the way through. Because, you know, as you do it the way I have it here, you can see this thing kind of flex a little bit when I, when I pull it together. I mean, it's not a ton, but you can see it moving. So I may need to come off uh, this thing with a, maybe a bracket or something to go maybe from here to this hole. Uh, that's where I had my vacuum pump. Um, remember, this is a cog setup, so you don't have to do it like a V-belt to where you have to put a ton of tension on it. Tension with a cog belt setup. I see people mess this up all the time with uh, blowers as well. If you stretch this thing super tight, it puts a lot of load on it, but you're depending on the cogs to actually uh, drive this thing. So the way I generally do it for these small belts um, and even like the one inch wide web belts, I'll take it and turn it like a quarter here should be pretty tight. And if I turn it pretty hard, as almost as hard as I can, I could probably go to halfway, but it's a really tight doing that. So it's about in between a quarter and a half of a turn. So that's about the proper tension. And you see the same, I mean, we, we want the cogs to work. And that's why if you see these uh, cog belts, like on, if you go to, any dyno video, Steve Morris, you'll see it all the time. When a, a cog is driving, it'll be tight on one side and then the other side's all floppy. And it looks like it's not supposed to be doing that, but that actually is the correct way. So now that the fuel pump bracket is on, that is installed. So that is in good shape. Essentially, all I gotta do is pick this up, put it in the back, and then crawl up under there and tighten up a couple set screws to clamp the clamp down on the fuel pump and then and you'll feel it when it drops in when this hex head drops in 
to the actual uh, back of the pulley there. I mean, it won't go but one way, it seems like. I mean, it'll, it'll either be in or not in. So, all right, let's stick this on. All right, guys, easy peasy. The pump is on and it is slid all the way up in there. I did, since I put the belt on first, I did have to put me a wrench on the harmonic balancer down there in the end Allen. And basically I just had to bar the engine over just a little bit, it wasn't too bad. It was just one of those things I had to get it to, to rotate. So it wasn't hard. I had to turn about a quarter turn and then the pump slid right in. You could feel it right when it dropped in. Now if I wouldn't have had the belt on, it would of course, I could have done all that by hand just by spinning the pulley. But you can see everything lines up good. Turning the pump about a little bit overdrive and I think it's like 60%, but we're good to go. So the only other thing I gotta do, I gotta change this fuel pressure sensor. So I'm gonna take that thing out real fast. Put a new sensor in, and then hopefully we can get this thing started in the next couple of days. So got a few things to do. Like I said, I'm not racing my car this weekend. We're planning on taking Courtney's car to the track on Sunday, get some testing with his. So go check his uh, YouTube channel out, the Paint and Paper Hustle. You'll see some more content on there. But mine, we're gonna get ready for dig or die. I've got to support this front. I'm rebuilding the links on the anti roll bar. Thinking about changing the stator in the converter as well. It's a little bit tighter one in there. I have not 100% determined if I'm gonna do that or not yet. Still gotta think about it and look at that. All right, guys, well, we are done. Comment, like, and subscribe. Go to turbojohnracing.com to get yourself some merchandise. Thanks, guys.